ready? Are you 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 ready to get it? You ready for war? Live is back, are you ready for more? The waiting is over, it's time to get poppin' We all wanna win it, just cash in the pocket They be alive, nothing can top it Fantasy's back, football's the topic 50 down from 50 in profit Boss at the top and we all wanna drop I'm taking this spot, bury the coffin Time for the action, enough for the talk Time to get crackin' live is back Cause speaking the facts, the champions boss is back to back Don't happen that often, enjoy the throne It's time to get off and welcome back It's time to get started, time for the weak and the strong to be part We're all in the war, fight to the finish Mad about trades, but it's Part of the business, do what you need. It's all about winning. Try to be king, own the division. Wanna be champ? That is the mission. Why with the flow? This is tradition. Ready to go? Time for the show. Roll your bloods, get ready to blow. Get ready to hear the good and the bad. You might not agree, but it's only on facts. If you get ugly, yeah, that means you're wack. Gino and Matt, finally we're back. Analyzing and sharing the stats, giving opinions and checking the facts. Keep it six, built to the trap. A league of ten, a single get last for team. Sticks and belongs in the trash. Race to the end, try not to crash. No one agrees, all of us clash. Something like Titan, Spider get smashed. You better contend if you wanna be champ. If you won't pay attention, you don't have a chance. No chance to win if you don't have a plan. Get a chance at the shit, better win if you can. Yeah, PPL is back. I hope you're ready. PPL is back. I hope you're ready. PPL is back. I hope you're ready. I hope you're ready. And just like that, we are in the battle. PPL Live Week 2 is here, underway, and ready to go. That first week of PPL action, I'm sure, has the rest of the league salivating for Week 2. But before we jump into Week 2, we got to take an eye back to Week 1 with Week 1 scores. Starting with the Argonauts roaring to start the season to 154 to the Baby Gas Team 67. Only for the boss leaves no doubt in the prestige matchup of the week. Continues their dominance over Patty Swin, 163 to 92. Squad underestimated. Season of No Excuses gets off on the right track. Beats up on the hapless. I need about Trey Fitty, 109 to 55. The Skulls in attendance. Watch Josh Allen put them out front. And they never look back, downing the United Players the Destroyers, 144 to 113, and appease the gods. Slithers away, escapes with the Monday night victory, 113 to the hapless gaff attacks, 111. Alrighty, PPLers, there's our uh, week one scores. Uh, let's see the result of these week one scores coming up through our final standings projections. Presented by Snickers. Starting at number 10, I need about Trey Fitty. I think he need a little bit more than that. At number 9, the Baby Gas team coming off to a slow start. At 8, the Gaff Attack. Thought they'd rise up. They've been kept where they are. 7, the Omega Conference champions. Patty's Twins, one of their worst weeks in recent memory. At number 6, Appease the Gods. Finding a way to get it done. At number five, squad underestimated. Fantasy Trends and Snickers not impressed with that week one. At number four, we have the United play as the Destroyers. Uh, despite the loss, they seem to be uh, relatively thought of highly. At three, the Pantheon Cup champions. Only for the boss. Flex and muscle keeping themselves at the top of the league discussion. At number two, the Skulls at their 144 big time win over the United players. And at number one, the new look Argonauts, uh, same old result as they check in as our number one team. Hey, Ulysses, any thoughts on the uh, fantasy trends uh, rankings? I mean, again, early on, <clears throat> never know what, what's going to happen. Uh, what I like to see, though, is, is Snickers coming with that hatred. I mean, two winning teams, Skulls and Squad, losing rank fascinating yeah i mean hey uh, it's got its own little bcs thing going on uh, i kind of like it uh keeps things intriguing all righty pplers so that was our uh final standings projections presented by snickers and now we're going to get you into the good the bad and the ugly we already know what it is good bad and ugly for our week one matchups all right ulysses give it to me what's your good bad and ugly man I mean, it's got to start with the obvious. I mean, only for the boss. Mm. Man, again, I had some hatred preseason. Wasn't impressed. After okay. the draft, wasn't impressed. Week one, 
I'm hella impressed. Mm. Came out against the Twins, shat on them. Prestige matchup of the week. Right. Leaving no doubt. And I mean, and, and this is a quote uh, from Only for the Boss uh, ownership to you, Ulysses. They didn't like being picked where they were picked last year. And uh, they said that they're handing out lessons for free. It seems like you learned your lesson already. Well, I mean, it, it's what a lot of teams don't like. They don't like the hatred. But again, you win, you're going to get the love. Right. And that's what only for the boss is getting. Again, turn me around. Again, this team was hitting everywhere. Rashad Penny was a question mark. Uh, Packers D, I don't think they're going to be in the lineup right. this week. Uh, but this team has depth. They've got answers in a couple of different places. Uh, I, I, I only see good things for only for the boss. Not only in week one, but moving forward. Uh, again, all hatred annihilated. I'm on board only for the boss. Right, and give me your uh, bad, man. Bad, I mean, again, I picked this team to be my good last week for the season. And again, I was not impressed. Squad, come on, dog. Mm. Uh, I was really expecting this team to get out and, and really dominate. They did. We'll get to what Trey Fitty put up. Mm. But again, I left with a lot of question marks. Okay. Alvin Kamara did not show up. Uh, Brandon Ayuk, I mean, you could you could talk about a lot about that weather yeah. in Chicago, but I mean, that was the fourth quarter. There was a lot of time for Brandon Ayuk to get in the game again. I got a lot of questions in uh, San Francisco at the quarterback position. Right. We've got a new look uh, running back right now. Kyle Pitts, where were you? Mm. I mean, Saquon was fine. But, again, if you're banking on Saquon getting 20-plus points every week, uh, let alone 30, I mean, come on, man. That Saints post was was a down-to-the-wire win. Yeah. This was a closer game than the final score reflects. Agreed. And, again, it was just a bad week for squad. Not telling to the season. I'm not overreacting on this. I'm just saying. You just I weren't impressed. Put up more. I mean, let's be honest, outside of Trey Fitty, they only would have beat the Twins and BGT this week. It could have got ugly if the squad basically played anybody else. Mm. So that's why they're my bad. I got to say in this matchup with my ugly, man, 55 points. I mean, it started on Thursday night. Cam Akers, Gooset, mm. Allen Robinson. I mean, again, I don't blame this owner for this, but I, I, I mean, hey, I saw a lot of cracks in the I mean, band. who else can we blame, Ulysses? Well, uh, Sean McVay. And I mean, <laughs> Sean McVay, look, we've seen Sean McVay on the up and up. We haven't seen Sean McVay sustaining a dynasty, and that's going to be the expectations. Okay. Of that play. Okay. I'm just saying. And Cam Akers didn't show up. Allen Robinson didn't show up. They were missing Von Miller. I don't know what Matthew Stafford did to Von Miller while he was out there. Yeah. But this guy was coming, coming to get it. Right. Uh, that Bengals coach could have gone either way. Uh, but there's a lot of question marks on this team. Trey Lance is not the starting QB. Right. Etienne is going to get uh, carries vulture. Uh, I, I have a lot of question marks on this team right now. And again, you said it last week. Leonard Fournette was the strongest player. 15.7. This guy would have matched the highest uh, performer in Jalen Waddle. Right. It was an ugly week. And I need Trey Fitty to change things up. Uh, they clearly went young. They're clearly thinking about the future, but they can play spoil sport a little bit better than they did this week. It was just ugly. Yeah, you got to stay in the present. Definitely, definitely. All right, man. So my good is the Skulls, man. The Skulls impressed me. I was in the house with him uh, to check out that uh, that performance by Josh Allen out there stiff arming DBs, throwing bombs, dry humping Jalen Ramsey. I mean, it, it was just going dumb. Uh, the drinks were flowing, and it was a great, great night for the Skulls. And it didn't stop there. I thought that they had a great performance from Jamar Chase. Once uh, T. Higgins was injured, Jamar Chase 8-8-8. Eight, eight, eight. Terry McLaren, I expect that rapport with Carson Wentz to only get better, and I expect McLaren to have a big year. And then, um, obviously, that Baltimore defense. I think Baltimore is going to have a huge season led by that defense, and I think that that's a sound play all season long. Waller was able to get involved with the Raiders, so they just got it from everywhere, and I'm expecting uh, more of the same from the Skulls uh, going into this week. My bad, man. <sighs> Is the guy I was, I mean, I was pumping this guy up for the first, I mean, I went back and listened to the show. I was pumping this dude up like 
like crazy. And that's the gaff. Um, I love the Jalen Hurts play. I love the AJ Brown play. But there's nothing else for me to love from what I was looking at here, man. I, 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 uh, Antonio Gibson did a fair job. But Javante Williams, you don't fumble the rock on the one yard line. That fumble was catastrophic for the gaff. It was super bad for the gaff. And what else was bad was the decision. I mean, match losing, essentially. It is match losing. And it's only match losing because he played Denver's coach. I think that he was trying to get, get an impressive week one win. Uh, kind of looked like he gapped out on ATG when that wasn't the case. And it came back to bite him. And he's got a, he's staring at an L with a huge game coming up against the United Players and Destroyers team that can score with the best of them. Uh, I, I, need, I thought the gap needed that win. It's really bad that they didn't get it. And that might turn this season away from what I thought it was going to be. So that's my bad right now. And my ugly is the most beautiful team in the PPL, the PPL's finest, Patty's Twins. How, how does Aaron only go for 0 0.7? This guy has taken this team to the top of the PPL multiple times, taken them to the top of Omega multiple times. And just to see that letdown show its face so early, so apparently. waiver here. I mean, the Twins have had Aaron Rodgers since go. Do they waver at Aaron at this point? I, I saw the Kirk Cousins pick up, and you know what? One thing Kirk has is weapons, and uh, the Argonauts mm -hmm. would definitely agree with that sentiment. So, I mean, if they go Kirk Cousins, I can't blame them. I mean, Aaron's really, I mean, these guys working with a bunch of rookies, Sammy Watkins, Alan Lazard. I mean, come on, man. I mean, they may need to look somewhere else. But the Twins have shown the loyalty to Aaron Rodgers, and Aaron Rodgers has rewarded that loyalty, so she might stay pat there. But that's not even where, where I'm, I'm, I'm really getting off at. Sutton, nine. Kimmett, zero. The only guys who showed up were, the, were her baby Colts. Other than that, the rest of the team really let the Twins down, and this is not looking like a team that's going to go back to the Pantheon Cup if this kind of performance uh, keeps up now. Keep in mind, the Twins, the last two years, went to the Pantheon Cup. They lost, they lost both opening day both times. But this one was, I mean, this was almost, a, this was a 70-point loss. So, I mean, let's let's call it what it is. It was an ugly week um, for Patty's Twins. Uh, but that being said, hey, it's time to segue. It's time to jump into what's going to happen now. Forget what happened last week. What's past is prologue. Let's jump you in to the first matchup of week two we got patty's twin segueing us into this matchup with appease the gods all right man this matchup is huge for patty's twins and it's used for atg atg could get out to an unexpected 2-0 start and patty's twins they can't afford to uh fall to 0-2 here we talked about aaron Rodgers' situation but hey let's let's let's, let's throw it up for discussion lamar was sensational uh opening day as was michael thomas Mike Evans, and of course, uh, who could for, I mean, who could not see what Cordero Patterson was about? One of the better draft picks, uh, at least after week one. What do you think of this matchup? Twins uh, struggling coming in to appease the gods who have a little bit of luck on their side. What do you think of this one? Yeah, I mean, uh, ATG, I mean, better to be lucky than good some weeks. Right. Uh, a, lot, a, lot, a lot can be said. I mean, uh, we can look at that matchup. Was it something that ATG did? Was it something that Gap Gaff lost that matchup. I mean, okay. ATG, we could talk about stimulus packages uh, all day. Mm. They got one week one. Mm. Thanks, uh, Gaff. I, I don't think that I don't think that's the case week two. I think that they get this, and I think that it's all about matchups. Okay. Uh, Aaron Rodgers again going against a team in Chicago that he's eaten up all his career. But again, as you mentioned, I'm not sure that the weapons are there. And this Chicago defense showed that it could be stout if the offense does not know what it's doing. Right. Um, I look across the way, love Lamar in Miami, uh, playing, I guess, Miami at home. Uh, Mark Andrews, the connection was there. They didn't go out, though. I think that bodes well for week two, though. Right. That uh, they're, they're going to be trying to get that. Yeah. Uh, we saw what Leonard Fournette did to Dallas. Joe Mixon going to be right there. Have no doubt about that. Okay. Uh, that Rams uh, defense, they they were struggling to stop anything. Cordero Patterson can run, he can catch. He's gonna get he's gonna get open in that 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 defense. I expect him to do well. Okay. Tampa Bay, New Orleans. I expect that to be a high line. Okay. That game's gonna be high scoring. I think we're gonna see some fireworks there. Jeff Wilson, 
uh, opportunistic free agency pick. Mm -hmm. uh, I I mean, we saw one, one of the better picks. I was, I was surprised ATG got him, actually. Yeah, I, I am, too. Seeing at the waiver order, I don't know what other teams are doing, but, hey, ATG's out there playing ball. Okay. Uh, got him against Seattle. We saw, uh, again, you, you said it, uh, Denver fumbled this game away. Uh, both running backs giving up the rock. I expect Jeff Wilson to take care of it. Questions of Mark Trey Lance. I think that Jeff Wilson gets fed. And we've got both defenses playing against each other right here. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, again, I look at Mitch Trubisky playing for the Steelers as a huge liability. Playing <laughs> against a guy like Belichick. This guy loves playing chess. He's got a scheme he's for that playing, ass. He's got a scheme for Mitch Trubisky. Trust me on that. This yeah. game might be like 9-3. to three. Mm. I think both defenses to show out. Mac Jones, question marks. Uh, Carlson showed Arizona. That, that game could do. I don't understand the, the coup pickup. I mean, I get that he was a high-scoring player, mm -hmm. but McManus wasn't the problem in week one. And okay. I think that that was a play that the Twins didn't need to make. Okay. And it, it, it might come back to possible, maybe not. I mean, who's clearly a good player? I mean, again, they probably could have got a better player, though, than the kicker. Uh, McManus was going to be just fine. I've got ATG taking this one. Mm -hmm. uh, one 128 to 116. Uh, I'm going to have to agree with you, man. Patty's Twins was my ugly, and they were my ugly for a reason. As good as I thought their draft was, I expected more from the studs. Austin Eckler going up against the Kansas City defense. Um, It looks like they're they're trying to keep him fresh early in the season, and that was really apparent against the Raiders. So I don't know how much they're going to use Austin, especially on the goal line, which is where running backs make their money. I think JT and Michael Pittman, though, are going to be just fine. I think that if she does win this matchup or is close in this matchup, they'll be the reason why. But like I told you, I told you this uh, in the preseason. I told you this last week. Aaron Rodgers without Devontae Adams. See, Devontae Adams allowed Aaron to cheat. He allowed Aaron to not have to worry about reading defenses, looking the whole defense up and down, going through progressions. He knew, hey. And Derek Carr found that out uh, very beautifully uh, week one. I got a guy that's going to win his matchup regardless of what the reads are. So let me take a peek over there no matter what. With that gone in the offense, Aaron has to cycle through guys. He's got to deal with guys dropping 75-yard bombs. And it's just going to be a long, frustrating year for him. And if the Twins keep Aaron in, it's going to be a long, frustrating year for them. On uh, ATG side... Okay, yeah, Cordero was nice. Mike Thomas was nice. But the core of this team is Lamar Jackson, Joe Mixon, and Mike Evans. As long as those three guys are in the lineup and as long as those three guys are playing well, ATG can play with anybody. I love, love, love the way Lamar came out week one uh, after the contract dispute showing these guys that, hey, uh, you can play around if you want to, but this is MVP caliber football that I'm going to bring to the table. And he brought that to the table. I know the Jets were the opponent. But expect Lamar to continue to shit. He only ran for 17 yards, meaning that he's due to break out um, on one of these teams. And I could see Miami being that victim. I like Mark Andrews as a bounce back candidate for week two. And the Jeff Wilson pickup, like I said, a lot of owners uh, are sleeping on that Niner backfield. Kyle Shanahan's going to scheme some plays open. And I think that both well for ATG. And I got ATG winning this matchup uh, 127 to Patty's Twins 117. And moving on to our next matchup, we go into Alpha Conference for a showdown of teams who aren't very well uh, acquainted with each other. But hey, one's a champion and the other one's trying to get there. We got only for the boss taking on the Baby Gas team. All right, man. So only for the boss, one of the highest or the highest scoring team of week one going to get up, up against the second lowest scoring team of week one, that Baby Gas team. We got Patrick on Holmes and Joe Burrow. Sounds like the AFC Championship. What do you think of this matchup, man? Boss BGT. Yeah, I mean, th this matchup to me, it looks on paper a lot closer than I think it's going to be. Okay. Uh, I, I mean, again, BGT suffered some some setbacks in week one. Right. Uh, Joe, Joe Burrow really stumbled in that first half. I'm, I'm not so sure. Uh, I mean, maybe he has the bounce back week. Uh, I mean, maybe he goes somewhere else. I honestly... Think Michael Parsons is coming. Is again, the better option. Uh, I called Jameis last week, and I, and I think he, he would have uh, uh, done better. Okay. Um, 
Josh Jacobs, I think, has a better week against Arizona. The big question mark for me is what does Dallas look like without that? Mm. Um, that impacts Ezekiel Elliott. More than time. anybody. Yeah, they're going to stack that box, trust me. And they're going to they're gonna challenge that team to throw. I think that that injury more than anything impacts them. I don't think, uh, I mean, I, I like the, the Bengals. I mean, he's going Bengals heavy. Which, right. I mean, I don't know if I'd be going after seeing that week one. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'd be going 49ers coach after mm -hmm. I saw how Trey Lance played. Okay. Uh, if, if you don't think Pete Carroll's got a scheme for that and was watching that tape, I mean, yeah, the weather played a factor, but but uh, that team could have played better. And, right. again, losing guys... Kittle's not going to be 100%. Uh, they don't have their number one running back. I wouldn't be playing the 49ers coach. Okay. Um, I look across the way, and I've got a lot less questions. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, shitting. Travis Kelsey, shitting. Yeah. Chiefs coach. I mean, uh, L.A. looked good, and I think it's going to be a great game. And I, I think that uh, what, what only for the boss does, they play the exact same lineup. They just put the Chiefs coach on the bench, and I think that they win comfortably. Okay. I've actually got them winning um, this one 133 to the baby gas team's 109. Okay, I agree with you, man, Um, but I disagree on – no, you don't bench Chiefs coach. Look, look, look. The boss has a, a tried-and-true strategy here. Um, They're expecting Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey to shit during the game, and they're hoping in the post-game Kansas City coach shits also. Um, it's been a sound strategy, um, something that, um, I mean, dare any of us really argue with. Like I said, my brother said he's passing out lessons and they're free. And you know me, I love free shit. So I'm, I'm going with only for the boss here. I'm loving Stefan Diggs on Monday night to close things out. And you know what's cute? You know what I like? The Robbie Anderson play in the flex. The boss is starting to get, he's starting to show a little pizzazz, starting to show a little behind the back. And, and I and I like what he's doing I mean, here. It's a great play. No, 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 it is. And 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 he's moved Miles Sanders up to RB two for the other Monday night game. Only for the boss. I mean, the only way I see them losing this matchup is if Joe Burrow goes nuts and Ezekiel Elliott finds a way to to go crazy. Also, the Niners win and the Chiefs somehow lose. That's the only way I see this matchup going BGT's way. I do like um I do like Josh Jacobs in his matchup. And I think Joe Burrow's due for a bounce back. And let's talk about Clyde Edwards Hilaire. He does have a potential check if Kansas City gets down there and decides to run and, and Clyde Edwards Hilaire takes it in a few times. That might slow down Patrick Mahomes. I just don't see it. If anything, Mahomes will throw it to Clyde Edwards so the boss will still get some of that. I got only for the boss. Back to back, leave no uh, doubt uh, weekends. Boss, 151. The baby gas team, 109. And moving on to our next matchup, we go back into the Omega Conference for a matchup of extreme consequence for both teams as both teams are staring at 0-2. We've got the United Players, the Destroyers, taking on the Gaff Attack. All right, man, so you know, obviously, I'm heartbroken by what happened on, with the Gaff. I mean, this guy was uh, my dark horse. I, was, I, I wanted to pick him to win the Pantheon Cup. That's how confident Gino was in the gap uh, coming into the season. And just to see poor decision-making, uh, baby shit decisions, it just, it, just, it just brings me back to where we've been on the gap for years past. Uh, obviously, I love Jalen Hurts and A.J. Brown on Monday night, but also like Derrick Henry on Monday night. Um, along with Cooper Cup, who should shit on Atlanta. What do you think of this matchup, man? You, you pee in the gaff. I ultimately think gaff gets this. Okay. I'm with you. I think that the gaff might one get away, but where the gaff and the UP are very different mm -hmm. is the UP is not going to be preparing as hard as the gaff is. Maybe that's a matchup. good thing. Uh, I mean, maybe it is, but again, I i mean, I like Jalen Hurts, and I love A.J. Brown. And I mean, again, Minnesota did what they did, but they didn't play a wide receiver like an A.J. Brown. Okay. They didn't face a wide res uh, a running back like Miles Sanders. I mean, A.J. Dillon and Jones did fair, fine. Fair. But, I mean, Philadelphia put up 38 points last week, mm -hmm. and Minnesota played a pretty hapless offense that couldn't get it done. Okay. I expect Philadelphia to be a lot more competitive. 
Um, we'll see what happens with Javante. We'll see what happens with Antonio. But, I, again, I don't see why they can't get it done. Right. Um, DK Metcalf, I could, I could see him getting it getting it done. Uh, Jets, Jets uh, fucking offense against the Browns, D, again, should be solid. Mm-hmm. The question mark I have, again, I mean, Broncos should win this Houston game. Should they? I don't know if there's – I mean, they should, <laughs> just the same as they should have won last week. Right. I mean, uh, but, again, you see what happens with the rookie head coach. And, frankly, that's why I wouldn't be going in that, that direction. Okay. Uh, I think I think that the Gap can get a better head coach, and, frankly, I expect them to get a better head coach. Mm. And I expect that to be the difference in this matchup. Tom Brady, I expect him to have a great game. I expect New Orleans to win. And okay. I think that – them having the Buccaneers coach is going to be a check on some of this uh, activity. And again, I'm not so much loving Derrick Henry uh, in the whole Tennessee scheme. Mm. I saw what happened in that game last week. Okay. Buffalo ain't. Buffalo is not playing. Okay. And uh, I saw what they did against the run. I saw what they did against the pass. And I expect them to maybe bottle Derrick Henry up, make Tennessee a little bit more one dimensional. Mm-hmm. And again, you're, there are certain players here. Cup is is not going to be stopped. Okay. But again, I don't like the Broncos. Them both touching the Broncos here, I wouldn't do it. Okay. Um, if, if I were either of these teams, I would go away from the Broncos right now. Just not so sure what what to expect there. So you got? Uh, I, I I've got uh the gap though winning a squeaker here, uh one nineteen mm-hmm. to the UP's one seventeen. Okay. Um, I'm going the other way. Um, no. And the reason I'm going the other way is because if DeAndre Swift plays, um, I really, really like the United players in this matchup. Swift had a great game, and it was overshadowed because the United players didn't come out and do what the other guys needed them to do. But DeAndre Swift was one of the best running backs in the game last week. Passing, rushing, receiving. I mean, he's breaking off 40-yard catch and runs. This guy's breaking off 50-yard runs and gallops. The only reason Jamal Williams even got busy is because DeAndre Swift had to go get some Gatorade after he broke a 50- or 60-yard run to get Detroit into it. The brother was unstoppable, and I don't expect that to stop against Washington. Um, I think Juju Smith-Schuster's only getting more accustomed to that offense. I think that he can play a big role against the Chargers. Um, I, I don't know if JC, uh, uh, JC for the uh, Chargers, uh, I don't know if he's going to play. Uh, if he doesn't play, I like Juju even more. Look, we talked about the regression situation with Mark Andrews not getting uh, any play last week. Mike Williams didn't get targeted nearly at all in that week one win. I expect him to have a lot more to say this week, especially with no Keenan Allen out there. Dallas Goddard is a nice little check for Jalen and A.J. Brown on Monday night. If he scores once or twice, it could be a disaster for the gaff. I already said what I had to say about Cooper Cup. Um, I, I'm with you on the coach. I think that Denver is actually the better coach play over Tampa Bay. So the gaff, or, or the UP may have to look at that. But even saying that, man, to have Derrick Henry um, on Monday night against a Tennessee team, or or excuse me, against a uh, Buffalo team um, that played really well, but I feel like because they uh, got to run out on the champs and got, that game was 10-10 at halftime. So it's not like Buffalo's completely unbeatable and unstoppable. I think that Derrick Henry definitely has room to run there. On the gaff side, while I love... uh, Hertz and Brown, we saw my, uh, Melvin Gordon is going to still be a big part of that Bronco offense. Uh, they say Brian Robinson's already back at practice, so uh, Antonio Gibson may not be long for the three-down role he's got. Now, it, it won't affect him this week, but I think that that game with Detroit, might uh, there might be a lot more passing than running. Uh, I don't understand the DK Metcalf play. TJ Hawkinson was not impressive. I do understand why A.J. Dillon's in the lineup, but that could go back the other way next week. The Gav just left a sour, sour taste in my mouth when they had a win teed up. All they had to do was pull the coach. And I think that they uh, that they might have began their own misery for the 2022 season. I've got the United play as the Destroyers getting this one. 131 to the Gav's 118. And moving on to our last Alpha Conference matchup. We go from 10 to 1. As I need about Trey Fitty takes on the Argonauts. All right, man. This is as big a matchup in the this match in the PPL typically as we can get. It almost makes me feel like, hey, you better watch out for Trey Fitty this week. They might be uh, on uh, the Argonauts might be on upset alert with a, a, a gap this big. 
obviously Trey Fitty bringing in Trey Lance. Uh, who, uh, oh my gosh, his debut was not very good. Travis Etienne, who got vultured like crazy. Leonard Fournette, the only guy that really needed to be in the lineup last week. Jalen Waddle, Allen Robinson, Noah Fan. I mean, Trey Fitty couldn't even crack 60 last week. I mean, the Argonauts almost scored 100 more points than them last week. The Argonauts obviously bringing in the Rogues Gallery of J uh, Justin Herbert. Justin Jefferson, Devontae Adams. I mean, we got Justins and president names all over the place. What you think of this one, man? We got Trey Fitty in the Argo. I don't expect upset alert. I'm not worried. Okay. It, it's not going to be close. I've got the Argos here in a leave no doubt performance. You said it. Trey Lance is not a fantasy starting quarterback. Shit. Guy may not be an NFL starting quarterback. Whoa, 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 whoa like, Ulysses. Like, I'm just saying, I mean, hey, if San Francisco didn't feel that way, they wouldn't have re-signed Garoppolo. Right. I uh, said it last week. Hey, and I'm not the only guy saying, uh, listen around the league. Mm. Uh, Travis Etienne, he has not secured that position. Mm -hmm. Leonard Fournette is solid. Jalen Waddell is solid. I wouldn't, I mean, I don't know what was going on in L.A. Maybe it'll get better. But, again, there are too many question marks, and frankly, there's no studs here. Okay. I mean, you look at the points rate, it's only week one. It's only week one. There's not a guy on this roster starting or on the bench in the top ten. Okay, true. And, 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 and that that's a problem. It just means that every week you're going to be rolling the dice. And I think, frankly, there are better options in free agency. I mean, you could drop Trey Lance right now, pick him up in three weeks. He'll still be on, on free agency. <laughs> trust me. Um, Squad might so be looking for him. I mean, hey, good luck there. Good <laughs> luck there. Um, you're 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 not going to be hurting. Um, so you can go and find somebody else. You can go find some other guys on the waiver wire and make this more competitive. But as of right now, it's not going to be. Okay. I mean, you mentioned it, Justin Herbert, top five. Dalvin Cook. Uh, I think that that them, Daryl Henderson. I mean, looks like he's going to be the guy in L.A. Uh, unless Cam Akers, uh, 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 right, and I think he only, I think Henderson only plays if Najee doesn't. No, exactly. Devontae showed why, why, uh, he was traded and why Green Bay was missing him. Justin Jefferson, I mean, uh, the Argo was looking like the winner of the offseason trade market, bringing back a guy that, uh, went out there and just shat on, uh, on, on yeah. Green Bay. Real quick. Uh, a lot of question marks there. Again, Ravens coach, I think if they win against Miami, uh, Colts D should should have a field day. Again, I'm not so sure on the other side. I just I think that this is a leave no doubt performance and has less to do with Trey Fibby and more just to do with the Argos talent. Trey Fibby needs to go out and get some more talent for this year. I get that they're going for young young guys, but I don't think it's Trey Lance and I don't I don't think it's some of these other guys. Okay. It's great that Leonard Fournette's cracking the lineup, but I've got the Argos leaving no doubt. 145 to Trey Fitty's 108. Mm, okay. Um, I agree. I don't know if the Argonauts leave, no doubt, but I do agree that they're going to get the win here. Um, I'm with you on Trey Lance, man. It, it was a humbling experience, and I think you know that better than anybody talking to me about what I saw in Chicago last week. It was a very humbling experience, uh, not not one that was a, a good taste left in a lot of mouths of people uh, uh, of the uh, West Coast. Um, I'm looking also at Allen Robinson. I, I just feel like a lot of his guys are bounce back candidates. I do like Allen Robinson this week. Uh, Jalen Waddle, he did get into the end zone. So, I mean, he could have a whatever week, but I do like Travis Atian. There was a few passes near the goal line that he missed that if he catches that he had a much better stat line. I'm not sure about this Cincinnati, uh, Dallas situation. Why do you have the D and then the head coach of the opposite team? You're just fighting your own self-interest there. So that's a bit of a confusing uh, situation there. I like Hollywood Brown. I think Hollywood Brown's in for a bounce back as well. Noah Fant, I mean, they, like you said, they could probably go get a tight end on waivers very quickly that's better than that. On the Argonaut side, it's, 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 I mean, it's, it's kind of the same show as from years before. Rock solid starters, guys that m most other teams couldn't bench, and they, they're not going to do the same thing. The, the, interesting, the only interesting thing here in this lineup is – Gabriel Davis or T. Higgins or Najee Harris or Daryl Henderson Jr. just based on uh, Harris's um, availability. I don't even know if it comes down to mattering much. I got the Argonauts winning this matchup uh, 134. So I need about Trey 50's 114. And moving on to the Prestige. 
matchup of the week. We've got interconference warfare uh, raging early on as we've got the Omega Conference's Skulls taking on Alpha Squad underestimated. All right, man. So obviously these te two teams are the only one in O's uh, going up against each other, both coming off of wins. Squads win, not nearly as impressive as the skull flexing muscle behind Josh Allen's Thursday night performance. What do you think of this matchup? Alvin Kamara looks a little banged up. Christian McCaffrey did not look like the same guy with Baker Mayfield out there. And Tyreek Hill has been turned into a possession receiver. What do you think of this one, Skull Squad? I, I love this matchup. Uh, Skulls being your good of last week, Squad being my bad. I'm not giving up on the squad, you know. Okay. Uh, I did call them preseason as my good. They were my preseason uh, uh, favorite. Again, stumbled out the game. I think they get it, get okay. it together this week. For me, it comes down to matchups. I mean, I'm not touching anything with Josh Allen, anything with the Bills coach. Those those are rock solid. Okay. I've got I've got question marks up elsewhere though. Mm -hmm. Um Arizona, I was unimpressed. Okay. And again, Fair I enough. think that La Las Vegas has a chance to get at this team. They played a much better Chargers team than Arizona from what I saw. Okay. Um, again, I don't trust Green Bay either. Aaron Jones did not look like the more dynamic running back. No, he didn't. I think that that, that offense is still struggling to figure out what they are. Uh, Jamar Chase is a lot. Uh, Darren Waller's a lot. Darnell Mooney, again, I would not be playing anybody on the Chicago offense as well. Mm -hmm. They're still trying to struggle to find their identity. Love Ravens uh, uh, defense. I go to the other side, and I think squad just has better matchups. Okay. If, if Arizona's going to turn a corner, it's going to have to go with Kylo. I think he can get it right. Mm -hmm. uh, Alvin Kamara, again, I think New Orleans gets this game, and I think Alvin comes back to life. I think okay. he can get there. And I think Tampa Bay starts feeling the loss of some guys like uh, uh, Kansa, uh Chris Godwin. You know, guys that, yeah, Godwin. I mean, the, 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 we're going to see some some differences, and I think it's going to lead to a better running game. Yeah. Christian McCaffrey, I think, should have a field game against against the Giants. Um, I think Tyreek's going to have to be involved. Julio's going to be involved. Again, I like a lot of these guys. Again, Kyle Pitts kind of disappeared. If he's going to win, he's got a lot of the pieces that his teams need to actually win. That's okay. Garbage time. And, again, I think that, that he's got a lot of guys on competitive teams. Don't think Saquon repeats, but he should have a solid season. Right. Um, again, 49ers D against Seattle, probably not a terrible call. I wouldn't be playing Rams, Coach. Too many question marks. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going to happen with Atlanta. They had a bad loss. Uh, you never know. These are two teams kind of with a bad taste in their mouth. Mm -hmm. Atlanta should uh, – Atlanta, uh, the Rams should win this game. I mean, they're at home. But, I mean, we expected them to be a lot more competitive. I mean, Von Miller doesn't play for Atlanta, so at least the Rams have that going for them. Right. But uh, still, I don't think I'd go there, especially when you're playing against the Bills coach. You better go find somebody better. Um, there, there, There's a better line. Um, but – I think ultimately squad makes that move, finds that play, mm -hmm. and I think that they they win a very competitive matchup here. They've got they've got the the talent here preseason, like I said, and they're playing a team that's coming off hot. But I mean, again, I'm not overly impressed with either win. Ultimately, the schools beat the UP. Squad beat Trey Fitty. I mean, these were not teams I was high on preseason. Right, right. So we're about to see something. I don't want to overreact on week one. Let's go, squad. Come on. I'm going for you. I've got them going 137 to the Skulls 128. All right. I'm going to go the other way. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter who you beat as long as you win. Um, the Skulls, yeah, they only beat the UP, but they put up 144. Squad only put up 109. I think that a lot of that continues this week. Listen, I know where the scoring is going to come from with, from the Skulls. Josh Allen is going to be there. And and another reason why I'm also liking the Skulls in this matchup is because uh, there's a potential check for Kyler Murray in the red zone, and that guy's name is James Conner. James Conner is one of the better goal line backs in all of football, and if they get close, they're not going to just let Kyler scramble around. They don't want to get their man hurt now. They're going to let James Conner eat away at the interior of that defense. So I like James Conner as a high upside play against the Raiders uh, Sunday. Um, Aaron Jones, I think it's going to be a musical chair scenes with him and AJ Dillon. I think Aaron, and they're going to expand the passing game a little bit. And Aaron Jones is by far the better receiving back. So I expect him to get done. Terry McLaren, I'm, I'm telling you, 
once him and Carson Wentz really get on the same page and, and, and Carson Wentz sees what Terry McLaren really is, he's going to explode even more. He had a, a long touchdown last week. I expect that to continue. Jamar Chase, Darren Waller, we already know what it is. I agree with you on Daryl Mooney. But you know what? Daryl Mooney could be a shot in the dark and catch a late touchdown against the Packers Sunday night. Crazier things have happened. I love the Baltimore defense. I love Buffalo coach. I like Matt Gay. I like the entire Skulls lineup. Now, on squad side, the name, the name value is beautiful. The name value is great. But I didn't see Christian McCaffrey last week. I didn't see Alvin Kamara last week. I didn't see Kyle Pitts last week. Now, I did say see say I didn't even see Kyler fucking Murray last week. So, it's a lot of questions on that squad underestimated side. Yeah, it looks good. Any week, it could crack and it could bounce back to normal. But I'm going to need to see it to believe it. And until I see it, I won't believe it. I've got the Skulls in the prestige matchup of the week uh, setting themselves up for a dominant season. I got the Skulls getting this one, having themselves another big week, 141 to squad underestimated 129. All righty, PPLers, thanks for another great week of PPL Live. It was fun. It was great. Uh, Ulysses S. Hate and Gino the Gent signing off. Good luck this week, and may the odds be ever in your favor.